Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So, um, <coughs> it's been freezing cold here, it's been minus three, minus one, hanging around that sort of temperature and it's so uncomfortable working with the solar um, control system, flashing it and stuff because you've got to get the laptop, you've got to go into the shed, the solar shed, it's freezing cold, you've got to stand up. Um, it takes about a minute to flash, so when you, so you can make a little change and you've got to wait a minute and another change, another minute. So it's a pain. Anyway, um, so I've ripped the, well not ripped, but I've taken the main control stuff off the wall and i brought it into the house where I can work on it in the warmth. So I've done that, but this here is not the master controller. This is a new thing that I've built, and this is a, a controller or a monitor. Um, so I could bring this into the house or into the office or whatever and keep an eye on solar and even give it some commands and I'm going to show you now. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you what I've got here. To start with we've got an 18650 cell which is made by Samsung as you can see there and um, I've got a little uh, board that comes with it. This board is connected, in, connected to USB at the moment uh, to 5 volts. So what actually happens here is this thing here, this little module, charges this cell and um, it charges it to 4.2 volts of course and then it can power the rest of the stuff when this isn't connected so it's pretty good and it should last a very long time so now when that's not connected of course we have a 4.2 volt cell which has got to power 5 volts so this thing here also steps the voltage up on the cell to 5 volts it's a really clever little module actually they're very very good um, so that's how the thing gets powered Next we've got an Arduino, which of course is the brains of the whole operation. Um, that controls everything from input to output to, uh, well, input and output, which because that's the transceiver, and a few other little things. Um, so yeah, just an ordinary Arduino Nano, it's the 328 version, not the 168 one. Um, then next we've got an LED and a resistor. The LED and the resistor um, indicate that we've received some data, so it'll blink for a split second. Uh, when it receives something. Over here we've got a little keypad which has up, down, left, right and select um, which you can see there and that's of course to give input to the Arduino uh, so that we can control the master control unit. Down here I've got a level shifter, it's in the centre of the screen now, so a level shifter and technically I don't need that level shifter, I may get rid of it. Um, the level shifter is there because the Arduino is 5 volts, but the RYLR module here, which is the transceiver, is only 3.3 volts. So I shifted the levels back in two. But actually, it doesn't really matter at all, um, because to start with, I've got a 4-channel level shifter, and I only technically would need two, because this is a serial device. It's a transmitter and receiver that could be shifted. Um, However, the transmitter from here, the RYLR module, trans the transmitter to here, um, wouldn't need to be level shifted because the Arduino can deal with 3.3 volts pretty well and it's unlikely that it would struggle with that. Um, maybe if there was some noise it would be a problem or something, but it's unlikely here. So the only uh, other problem is from uh, the nano to here, because that would send a 5 volt signal to here which is not acceptable so really we only need to change one channel and it's um, you know it could you could really do it with a voltage divider and be fine so I might get rid of that level shifter I'm not sure um, anyway so that's what the level shifter is for I've got the RYLR module here um, actually I've done a video about this where I test its range um, I'll put a link in the description to this video because this little module here is extremely impressive, um, very, very impressive. The range is just crazy. Um, it's very powerful, and it has no problems um, transmitting from the garden to the house and all that sort of stuff. It's it's really good. Then, um, oh yeah, so I didn't say what I was going to do. So that transmits um, commands over to the uh, master control unit, and it also receives data back. So basically what this thing does is this, when I um, press something here, this requests data, so it sends it. It sends a command to here, and then this sends it to the master control unit, and the master control unit replies, and uh, replies with data. Well, sometimes there, there can be other commands as well, but more on that in a minute. So also we've got here a LCD um, display, which has actually got um, a little module behind it, which converts it to I squared C, um, because actually it's SPI. Um, 
if I remember, oh well, actually it's not SPI either, it's it's something else. But you can see that there's a lot of pins. So yeah, I put a little converter on it to make those basically two to four wires, it's so much better. Um, so yeah, this LCD, let me just press a button. <coughs> and you can see that it turns on. Now it's requesting data now, and it's receiving it because you can see that blink in there. So everything's working. And it's requesting solar data. Now, of course, the um, master control unit isn't actually um, all wired up, so it's not going to receive anything meaningful at the moment. However, you can see here that it's trying to get solar data. Now, if I go to the next menu, you can see that it says charge, drain, battery, light. Now, it can get light data. You can see there it's reading 1413 lux. So it can get light data, um, that's because of course um, I connected a light sensor up to the um, prototype if you like. So let's see what else we can we can get here. <coughs> AI, whether AI is on or off. Now I've actually programmed into this a way that we can edit so we can change this to off, look. Change it to off. And it should come back. Yep, yeah, it's off. And then we can go to something else. Source, we can change the source. There's a bit of a delay there, you can see, but um, we can change the source. <coughs> Turn the inverter on or off. And then it says connections. So connections are means is it connected? Is the master control unit connected to the router? And S means is it connected to the server? So for those of you who don't remember, the idea is that. Um, this whole thing, the master control unit, is going to send data to the server um, so that I can control it via a website and also so I can log the data to learn more about solar. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, it's been offline for such a long time. So yeah, that's what that does. Uh, date time. I haven't finished this off, so for now I've just got time. Uh, which, which seems to be quite right anyway. Um, so that's that. And then we go back to solar. So this is my um, <coughs> my uh, monitor or remote control, if you like. So yeah, as you can see, there are still some minor issues. Like um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's a, there's a little bit of um, a slowness, like almost like a ghosting or something on the screen. And there's also that issue there where it says zero and then it comes up with a proper value and it's particularly bad over here. See it says off, oh no it is off, hang on, mains none, you see? Off, yep, fine. These things here can um, appear as zero or something like that and then it'll update a second later. The reason why it does that is because when you go onto the screen, that's when it requests the data. Um, so yeah. You see there, look, it's requesting data and receiving it. Go back to date and time, you see, zero, and then it's coming up with the proper time it's receiving. So yeah, um, that's my, uh, was this small project. Um, I hope you like the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.